Anytime Ijaz attacks the Bible, he shows that he's smarter than Muhammad, better than Muhammad, knows more than Muhammad. Why? Because the consistent teaching of the Quran and the sound narration is that Muhammad confirmed the very scriptures that the Jews and Christians had in their possession at his time. And the Quran says that Jesus confirmed the very scriptures between his hands at his time. Unless now he just wants to come up with some new set of scriptures, the only scriptures that would have been in existence at the time of Jesus up to Muhammad are the very scriptures that have variations, just like the Quran does. Let me just go through a slew of verses for the sake of time. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. Chapter 2, verse 89. Chapter 2, verse 91. Chapter 2, verse 101. Chapter 2, verse 113. Chapter 2, verse 121. Chapter 2, verse 136. Chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. Chapter 3, verse 50. Chapter 4, verse 47. And then we go to chapter 5, verses 43 to 48, 66 to 68, and on and on it goes. And then the sound narration. So, Ejaz, make my day, help me to hang you. Attack the Bible for variations, because you show that you know more than Muhammad. That means you expose him as a false prophet. But if you believe in Muhammad, you have to accept the Bible, and he's still a false prophet, because Muhammad was an ummi. He did not know that his Quran contradicts the Bible. The books of the Bible, as we have them today, we can't authenticate them. We can't trace their lineage back. We call this thematics or genealogy. You have different manuscripts at different times, and we're trying to understand how they were written, why they were written, and with whom. Now, I want to congratulate Ijaz for now doing what I said, and he pretty much destroyed his religion, because I appealed to Muhammad, he appealed to biblical scholars. Isn't it ironic, a Christian who thinks Muhammad is a false prophet and antichrist? is appealing to Muhammad, he's appealing to uninspired textual critics, which means he just proved these scholars know better than his prophet. Good job, he just, why are you still a Muslim? You need to repent. So if these textual critics that you are selectively sliding and misquoting, because <clears throat> you don't quote in context, are right, Muhammad is wrong, Allah is wrong, because Muhammad had no problem with the variations in the manuscripts that existed amongst the Jews and Christians, unless you're saying he was that much of an ummi, that much ignorant, he didn't know that the Christians, their Old Testament would have variations with the Jewish scriptures, because he confirmed them. You'll find that in chapter 3, verses 3 to 4, chapter 5, verse 48, chapter 2, verses 40, 44, but then to add insult and injury to your case, in chapter 3, verse 50, in chapter 5, verse 46, in chapter 61, verse 6, it says, Jesus confirmed, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadehi, confirmed the scriptures between his hands. Well, did Allah not know that at the time of Jesus, there were different textual traditions of the Old Testament that were not uniform, they had variations? So is he deceiving Jesus? Did your God deceive Jesus to confirm all the scriptures, not a word about the variations, proving textual corruption? So you know more, more than your God and your prophet. Why are you a Muslim? Because it seems like you guys want open dialogue here. Yeah, that's what we want, and I can corner them, they can't run. You'll never get to me. Did you guys want to ask Ijaz a question, or did Ijaz have a question for you guys? They, they, ask they would not ask. One answer. Go ahead, Ijaz. What's your question? Yeah, a simple question. Okay. Why did those scribes omit uh, uh, for the, in the Vulgate that Jesus does not know the day or the hour when it addresses him as the son, speaking of the person, not speaking of natures? You said about scribes changing the text, so that is referring to the veracity of the scriptures. But even if we go with your very imbalanced approach to textual criticism, they must have done a very poor job because they left intact the father alone. So even your argument buries you because whatever the scribes did, if they inserted the word son or omitted it, because there's a debate among textual critics, that passage still has the father alone. So they must have done a very poor job because they didn't remove the word alone and they left Mark 13, 32 intact because I know what you're referring to, Matthew 24, 36.